fast. So let's uh, duplicate this file now, okay? So let's just do Control J. We did this in layers before. And let's uh, do it again, okay? And Control J. And in this case, we'll just, with this image now, we'll just move it to the side, let's say, okay? So just uh, something a little bit different. And we'll just give it a black and white look just on that image and we'll just associate it with the one file below but really what we've got here is uh, three different layers of images and an adjust adjustment layer it doesn't matter even if it was just an adjustment layer whatever I do to an image if it's a multi-layer in any way I have to actually save save it uh, and either a PSD or the likes of a uh, TIFF file. In this case, I'll rec I recommend that we're using the likes of a uh, PSD file. So let's see this. Now, as I go to shut this down, okay, if I, clo I close it down, do I want to save it? I'm just going to go yes. Now it's going to open up the dialog box and go, well, what do you want to save it as? Okay, so let's not work in that technique where we just press the X all the time. Let's go into File and now we're going to save as. And this stage you can see by default it, choo it chooses now to be a PSD file, okay, a Photoshop document. That's really what we're doing here. And so in this case I would mo move it, uh, I would just change its name from O to W, means it's working in my language, and then basically I press Save. Now in this case it's a non-compression file. OK, so it means that whereas we had an option for compression before in this file, we don't need to do it. Now, I can also save it as a TIFF by selecting the different option here. And TIFF uh, came of age uh, um, kind of midpoint within Photoshop development, so about 10 years ago now. And uh, it basically allowed a TIFF to have a multiple kind of document as well within things, really. So in this case, I can just press Save. It's saying image compression is none. What do I want to do? Interleave, compatible, blah, 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 blah. And so I'm just going to press Save then, press OK. Including layers will increase the file size. Yes, that's what I'm doing. But I'd usually say with multiple layers, save it as a PSD. OK, so just going to press OK. And that saves at the bottom. So now if we just go back to where we were in Bridge. And we can then start to actually see where we kind of got those images from. So the natural save demo we can now see we've got a jpeg we've got a tiff image we've got a jpeg image um, cropped one obviously and we've got a psd file so if i open up either the psd file or the tiff file yes we're going to have a multi-layered document open up straight away for us as you can see here so when we shut it down uh, as long as we're not doing anything aggressive to the image to lose information. So in other words, with this file here, in the middle layer, if I then go control L for levels and I do some something to it, yes, and I now basically save that image. Okay, so if I just go uh, control W to close it down. It's going to ask me, do I want to save it? In this case, if I just say yes, it overwrites the PSD file that was. And we can now basically, if we open up here again, we can see there's a drastic dif a difference between the PSD file and the actual original that we saw beforehand. And that's lossy. So even if I open it up again, there's nothing I can do to that image because I made a destructive adjustment to that file. However, if I just delete that one for a minute, that layer, and I control J to duplicate it, if instead, if I wanted to make that levels adjustment to the file, if I used uh, the likes of a adjustment layer, so in here, we're just going to go in and basically use levels. And then I did that same thing. And then I close it and I press yes. Then we come back into the bridge again. We can see with the PSD doc uh, document now, when we open it up again, because it is an adjustment layer, I can switch off that effect on and off. So 
PSD is really for layers. A TIFF is a non-compression file, but it's usually used as a flattened image, uh, especially if you're sending off to like sort of printers or whatever it would be and things, because it is a non-compression file, yes? So if we look at the difference now, if I just flatten this image, I'll save it first, Control S, then I'll go to Layer, and I'll flatten image. Discard the layers, yes, or the hidden layer, I should say. I go Shift Control Alt S, that is Save As. I'm going to go in and actually just do first of all a TIFF file. I'm going to press Save. Do you want to replace it? I'm going to go No for now, and instead I'm going to go to uh, Work in One. Save there. We've gone through that process before, and now we'll go and file, save as, and we'll make it into a JPEG. And I just want you to see the difference in the actual file sizes. So if I just go in here, still going to do the compression 10. I'll go Shift Control S again, JPEG once more, but I'm just going to give it another number 2. Yes, press in save. In this case, I'll reduce down the quality to 5. Press OK, shut that down. And then basically, if we look at the difference in the file size sizes alone, the uh, TIFF file is basically a 63 meg file, as we can see here. And then basically, the JPEG um, uh, that we just saved and things, the 1 and the 2, are basically the W1 is the JPEG here. That is a um, 4.57 meg file. And then we've got the likes of the W2, which is a 1.3 megabyte file. So the TIFF, the full TIFF with layers, is basically 250 megabyte. The flattened TIFF is 63 megabyte. The JPEG 1, so that is the same size as the TIFF, but it's in a, J, a JPEG is 4.57 megabyte. And basically the compression file, the, J, uh, the JPEG is 1.3 megabyte. So deciding on how we're saving our files is absolutely essential for us to make sure we don't throw away too much information. So let's take a look at PNG files. Um, basically I've opened up a file here and as we can see in the top, it's basically saying it's .png. So um, also we can see that we've got a kind of a checkerboard um, kind of visible space behind. So a PNG is a file that will allow you to have uh, something as a cutout or a fl an image flo uh, floating on an invisible background, as it were. So it's not a layered document, so it allows us to use it on the likes of websites and so on to actually kind of have a smaller image in a bigger space or rounded corners, whatever it would be. So um, basically uh, what we've got here is I've just kind of dragged uh, Natalia's image in again. We kind of just drag it in and then we'll just uh, kind of drop it on. Now, with working with layers, we've touched on this and we're using layers, we can see that we dropped it on top, so it means that it's covering the actual image below. But if I kind of drag this uh, below the actual uh, Polaroid document, you can see now it basically hides itself, and uh, because what is on top uh, hides what is below, the white border that we had basically is hiding this image straight away with it and things really. So um, that's that's pretty good. Um, to save this image though for the web, I'd need to flatten this Im image if I wanted it to include the border around and things, yes? So I would have to go to File, Save As. Now by default, remember at this stage, let me just put it back into Natalia here again. Um, at this stage we, uh, will by default, because it's a multi-layered document, get the options for PSD, large document, Photoshop, PDF, or a TIFF, okay? Because it's a layered file, all right? So that's the first thing to remember. Cancel that for a minute, all right? If I just go ahead and I delete this image, all right? And it's just this one layer, even though it's got a cutout, we can go File, Save As, 
I can now click it on to Natalia Save Demo and now you can see uh, in addition to the Photoshop I've also got this PNG available to me and that's really what we want for this type of file so if I just save that there for a minute press OK and then we're pretty much done so let's make one of these anyway should we just to show you kind of the cutout for a minute so if I just go into a uh, file new uh, it remembers a file size that we might have used before with height and so on with it but let's first of all call it a new file so let's kind of pull I can never spell it you know pull aroid all right and then we're going to just say we're going to work in inches for now so in inches and we're going to make the width let's say five in inches and the height seven uh, we'd obviously need to know the actual size of the Polaroid to make this kind of perfect as such really. The background is going to be white and that's going to press OK. So when I do this by default, you'll see that we've got a lock um, on here and this won't allow us to actually cut out within the image itself. The first thing I need, need to do is double click onto the lock or click it once and then it kind of lo loses the lock. Now what am I going to do? What I want to do now is basically select a part of the image and I want to delete a part of that image. Now, um, because there is nothing below this image, we can see it, we've got the checkerboard effect. Okay, so straight away, we just created that Polaroid effect with it, and we can go in and go File, Save As, and we can go into Natalia's JFR, and we can call it Pol uh, Polaroid PNG, save it okay saves it again so at this point if I just go back into here and we just go and find the Polaroid that we just created it opens it up let's go and drag Natalia in so V for the move tool drag it onto the Polaroid PNG drag it and drop it now you can see it's much bigger than the actual file size because we made it a very specific size that's no problem control T to transform and then all I've got to do is basically make sure it is not much bigger than the actual frame. Because we unlock this frame, you can see as we brought, we brought it in, it's not got a lock on it. I just drag the layer below, or I could have dragged the bottom layer above. Okay, So I could have dra dragged the Polaroid up and down. And there we've got. So at this stage, though, because it's now a multi-layered document, if I try and save this file, it will go File and Save As, and then basically it's not giving us the option for anything else and things really. All right. So we can't resave it as a PNG. At this point, though, if this is the image card that I want, I'll just flatten it. Uh, basically, I'll just use my shortcut, my action to flatten layer or go into Layer, Flatten Image. And now I want to file, save as, and then at this point I can go Polaroid, Natalia, and I can again save it as a PNG for compression, or now of course because I flattened it I've got the JPEG option come back up again. So in this point I just press save, remember I want quality so it's going to be quality 10, press with that and then basically I'm done. So as far as the document, as far as the PNG is concerned, I can work in exactly the same way with this image here. So I can unlock the background. I can make a selection. I can select and invert that selection. I can delete that selection. I can now save this as a PNG. So file, save as once more we can see that the PNG option is now available for us and then we just knew Natalia I can call it the same file size because we haven't used it before but we're basically work, working it's got its PNG and then we're going to press save so when I close this image again yeah, when we close that image I'll just close the Polaroid as well Let's double click into here to actually launch. You can see we've got the image there, which is the PNG. We'll open that up and then basic, well, basically, if I um, kind of want to kind of do something fug funky behind it, even if it was creating a new background, I'll fill that with either white with the alt and the backspace or the control and the backspace. 
and now I can just actually drag that layer behind and so straight uh, straight away we've got a, a multi-layered document once more though we'd need if we needed a JPEG or a PNG of it we would need to flatten that file and at least at this stage it can now be saved as either a PNG or a JPEG so I know that file saving and everything else can be a little bit confusing but at the core of what we're doing is most of the time I'd recommend that you save a JPEG file and basically save a minimum of 10 and if you know you're going to be doing a lot of work on the actual file itself then save it as a PSD doc, a document to allow you to basically work for, uh, forward rather than backward as such and things. One of the key things is file compression especially when you're using JPEG files. The more and more you over save the same file then eventually it will throw more and more and more of the kind of the document information away and I think there was some stage somebody worked out it was about 10 or 12 times of JPEG compression that it started to lose its little bit of sharpness as such really but at the heart of what we're trying to do we're going to go to file and we're going to go to save or save as we are going to make the decision based on what the image has PSD for the likes of a multi-layered document or JPEG uh, for our main kind of save.